You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. It's Johnny High and Stet Allen here. Hi. And you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. We love it. It's awesome. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, um, before I introduce my guest, I want you to please get out and subscribe to Bod's Mayhem Hour's YouTube page. It takes two seconds. Just click subscribe and hit the notification bell. We got a lot of stuff coming down the pipe for you guys and gals. And trust me, I have a lot of stuff. So. It's your fault if you miss out, not mine. I'm just telling you. But anyway, we got some great guests on the uh, interview this evening. I got current drummer of Metal Church and formerly of Wash, Stet Howland, and his longtime friend, John Hyatt of Howland Hyatt. They have released their debut album, H2, via Mind Snap record label. Also, check out singles Eve of Destruction and cover of Why My Guitar Gently Weeps and music video for Wrapped in Chains. So, guys, how you doing? And welcome to the podcast. Good. Pleasure to be here, man. How are you? Doing good. Last week, man, we had all kinds of trouble. He's over Sweden and geez. We were at Sweden Rock, you know, and we, we'd already played on Wednesday and it was probably Friday or something. We were already overstaying our welcome and they were, were nothing but nice to us. And they gave us a press booth and everything. But the Internet just wasn't good enough. And, yeah. and the whole place was shaking like Saxon was playing and like the whole the whole place was vibrating. Mere buildings couldn't control. You know, couldn't, Lord. It, it was great, man. It was great. So how was it seeing the fans, you know, we're, all, we're getting out of the pandemic, so, 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 so-called, whatever, but seeing all the fans out to this and, and their reactions, um, what what was your takeaway from it? Uh, well, it was, for me, it was mind-blowing, you know, because we were, we were there um, as John Beauvoir's uh, band, of course, uh, but I couldn't help but still be the guy from Metal Church, you know, so yeah. the, the fan love all across the board for everything was just amazing. I mean, it was totally amazing. Uh, people were asking about metal church and, and the simple answer now is we're rebuilding and it's, you know, the band is not over. We're coming back. Uh, they were, you know, happy that I was playing with John, that we were playing with John. Um, John, he's just a great artist. Uh, and, and everybody interacted. It was great. So the fan love is incredible out there. The reaction to bands like for instance, Saxon, it's just crazy. People, are rocking again man it's i mean uh, everybody's so happy to be there it's just yeah that's awesome over, over there it's just incredible I, I mean how many bands did we stumble around to see oh god i i, I, I lost track yeah and, and stuff like megadeth like you know they were amazing i play with them a lot they, they sound good and stuff but that night they were amazing it was like the the sound was great uh, it was just a, a winning night you know and it was uh it was a very nice night I'm glad to hear that metal church is, is coming back full force. And, and, and I definitely was, was shocked when I heard about Mike, cause that, that just floored me. I was like, what? Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you guys are coming back full force for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if the band is, is too amazing to just, it would be ridiculous to let it die. They, you know, I was, I'm happy to be a part of it. The reason I'm a part of it is because I was a fan prior because they used to come out and tour with Wasp. And I would I would just go out there and watch them and go, why the hell are they opening for us? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like I, I I mean I understood I understood, but I mean they were just they were the best band every night technically everywhere. I mean always and still the band's still really good. I mean I'm I'm an honor to be a part of it, you know. And that's what gives me the freedom to do things with Johnny, you know. For instance, you know it's like Metal Church allows us freedoms and and Mike losing Mike was devastation because he was a family member he was uncle mike at my house he wasn't just mike Howe, the legendary singer yeah. he would wash dishes with my wife or whatever or me after a big dinner because we'd have the, the band over and uh, then he'd play with the girls and stuff and you know and then he was he was part of the family so it was it was a big loss you know we're actually in the studio recording in the new metal church record right now oh that's awesome uh, that's very awesome who's doing vocals right now what's what's 
it's not anything that's to be discussed just yet. Ah, I got, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's gray matter right now. But um, yeah, the, it's going to be amazing. Is all I can, I promise you. And uh, there's reasons why we're we're tight lipped about everything. Sure. Um, and that's the way it's just got to be. And we're all sworn to it. So no, there isn't a one of us. Certainly not me. That's going to be talking over talking about it. And the cool thing is when I was, when we were over in Sweden, I gave the, the fans what, what I could. I'm like, dudes, I, I'm telling you, we're rebuilding. Please trust us. You know what I mean? And they're like, okay, that's good enough. And I'm like, sure. right on. Yeah. You know, and it's tough. That's a lot to ask for. It is. Um, but that's what we got. The weight is worth, the, is, is, is worth it. So trust me. So, yeah. <laughs> So how excited are you both to have this debut album H2 out, especially seeing it go from its infancy to adulthood now? Well, it, it, was, a, it was a long process. We actually started recording the, the record in the middle of the last Metal Church record when we were recording it. And uh, yeah. we took some pieces and some songs that we had for years and years. And before you knew it, like we had a record. And, yeah. and take it from there, Seth. You, you, well, yeah, the thing is, he's this guy's... Uh, we've been in bands together for a, a while off and on, you know, and he's one of my, probably my best friend. And, and, um, I just feel like, uh, you know, when we were down on when there was nothing going on, we'd make music anyway. So we would just record music without thinking about a, a genre or anything like that. And uh, that's what this record is. It's like an eclectic collection of, of our musical feelings from day to day. We didn't think about anything. It's, there's like, it's, it's so many different styles on it. You know what I mean? So I didn't really know what to do with it. So I called my buddy Opus up. I go, me and my buddy got this thing and it sounds real good, but it has no real identity or whatever. And he, and he listened, he's going, dude, I know exactly what to do. And he called his buddy Larry over at Bond Artists and they got the orchard involved and all before I knew it, we had everything lined up as tight as we do in metal church. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> okay, let's do that. You know? And, and the numbers are almost the same. I mean, it was like a very similar arrangement to, to bigger bands. Um, without advances and stuff, because you know we didn't really need it, and we still shot four videos, and so it's a very, been a very interesting thing. So we're, we're excited about it, um, and we just right now we're just waiting for you know a couple a, a couple sh decent show offers to build around. You know, oh. we're not going to just we're not going to force feed ourselves on territories. We're going to sure. wait till we have some interest somewhere. I go, yeah, man, your song's been in the top ten and you know <laughs> wherever for the last six weeks. We need a show. Yeah. And and then we'll get a show there. We'll build shows around it. That's kind of my feel of expertise. <laughs> adding adding shows to anchor dates. What about like the frustration? How frustrated was this to to be on these songs and not be able to do anything with them until now? Now they're finally getting to see the light of day and having them for so long. Well, you know, that that really um wasn't an issue for us so much. Uh because there takes there's so much that you have to do behind the scenes in order to get things ready to to launch it and release it sure that was probably nine to 12 months and just in that alone yeah and this guy i gotta say he's really he's an amazing producer engineer but he's like really there's a lot that goes down and then once you start shipping files around there's always a problem and then once you want to get the you know get the get the right get the right edit of the video to the record company so we can release it yeah okay you know what i mean it's like it's crazy behind the scenes, you know, it really is. And, and he gets in the thick of it a lot and does a great job, you know, um, it's, it, it's, it's a little bit of madness, but, it, but it's so worth it. And now we're having, we got some traction, you know, the records, we, we have skateboard marketing on uh, Muncie. just, this guy's, you know, he's like a way up the ladder. I don't know even why he's do, dealing with us, but uh, he's doing a great job with us. We got, we're, we're alive all over the place, you know? Yeah. And, we're in the top 30 or 50 of, I don't know, all sorts of charts. I don't even know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right, man. The, the work <laughs> behind this is so, so hard. And, and, and nobody understands it unless you're a musician or a podcaster. The work that goes behind this is just, oh, my God. Very, yeah. very, very, very hard. Time consuming, too. But you got to love what you do. Yeah. I mean, and, and yourself, I mean, you have to coordinate with rock and roll guys who, I mean, even us guys, we're pretty responsible and everything, but still, we screw up, you know? We oh, yeah, everybody. Like, Shit, we were supposed to do that interview. <laughs> oh, I can't. I'm fucked up. You know, it's like, well, you better get unfucked up. You got an interview with it now, you know what I mean? <laughs> we, 
we don't do a lot of that, but it still happens, you know? And, sure. and uh, like, we, you should have seen us with, in all honesty, running around with uh, iPads and fucking headphones and all sorts of shit, trying to get ready for you at the festival. Wow. You know, that, that was crazy. Uh, you, we, you know, you figured we'd have a couple days off, but we, re we really didn't. We had a lot of different interviews to do in our, you know, off time. And I had just bumped into my beau, um, James Kotak, you know, they, they had a, the kingdom come had, you know, kind of a weird show, whatever. And they're getting off, whatever, but I don't give two shits. That guy's been my friend for like 30 years. So I was just, you know, visiting my friend a little bit and he was like right there. And I had to kind of, kind of get away from, you know, to, to come to you, you know, and then we got in there and we had no, you know, everything was fucked up. It was no good. I was like, God damn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's like, you know, but we, you got to try out of yeah. respect to, out of respect to you and your time, we're going to try and do that stuff. And we're going to, me and him always try and do that. Do our very best to do what we're supposed to do. And then we, sure. when you've tried all you can do, you look at each other and go, it's time for a beer. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> We've done all we can do here. <laughs> you know? What led the title track, Eve of Destruction, to be the first track released off this album? I mean, what was it about that song that had to come out swinging? What for you guys? What You know, that's got to be the one. Um, I don't really know. Um, all right. I, the record company pretty much. I, I have kind of an answer. I mean, the somewhat answer is we have this song wrapped in chains. That's just, it's like a, uh, to me, uh, it's, it's a, it's a crossover. I mean, it actually has potential to have, have some, some life, but we wouldn't dare let that out first because the people are going to expect, you know, cause just because of my involvement, they're going to expect it to be heavier. So we wanted to find a, a heavy, a heavy song. And, um, that one was cool, man. You know, it hit, Oh, yeah, the drums on that. Yeah, the drums are kind of yeah, cool. Awesome. But that, for me, his voice is just ridiculous. You know, it's like, it, it's really, you should hear him live, too. It's it's really, really good. You know, ridiculous in the good sense. Um, so we chose that to be to, to, to start out a little more metal, a little more rock and roll. So the metal church and wasp bands of, and, of the world and stuff wouldn't go, what's he doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> What led you guys to cover "While My Guitar uh, Gently Weeps"? What was the reason to say that one? Uh, that song has just always been one of my favorite Beatles songs, and I, I just had this idea in the back of my head. I said, "Man, I, I bet you we could really do a bang up job on this." And you did. Yeah. Oh, you got you were amazing. The guitar work was amazing. Actually, the, the vocals were great. Uh, Jerome's bass lines were just like singing. It's just you know, yeah, it's great. Uh, the whole whole record is just like, amazing. So, the only thing I I did was overplay a little at the end, but that's what I do anyway. So. <laughs> hey, that's to be expected. I mean, I didn't I didn't I mean, not to, to, to down myself too much, but I'm a, I wasn't a major contributor to the greatness of that song. I just kind of was, you know, I, I went along with it. I, I really like the song, and it's got a good groove. Um, I, I just played it live at Fantasy Camp like uh, a month or two ago. We were. Where's that place on the on the beach that we played with Rudy and everybody? Uh, that doesn't matter. Oh yeah, Johnny Brown. Johnny Brown's, yeah. I remember playing that with Rudy Sarzo. Vin, Vinny Vinny Appice looks at me, he goes, he's like, I don't want to play this. You want to play it? I'm like, yeah, I want to play it. And I jumped <laughs> up, he gave me the sticks, and it, it was that song. It was cool. I don't know where that story came from. Sorry, you get what you get, man. <laughs> 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 Any tracks that did not make this album, we could see on another, on another album, or maybe an EP from you guys down the road, possibly. Yeah, there's there's a few that we we have uh, tucked away in the vault, so to speak. You know. Yep. Yeah, and we are just because this started last Metal Church record, and and like if you could see, like right now, I'm sitting on the stage at my studio, but the other way, I have a huge a big drum set mic'd up that we're going to be that I'm starting. Well, I'm supposed to have started already the Metal Church record, <laughs> but in reality, I'm starting it right now, and um, and I'm and I don't get to go home till I finish it, you know. And I've I've been I just got back from Sweden. We came here to my place in Florida, rehearsed two weeks with John Bouvard, went to Sweden for almost a week. Now I'm back here. I got to bang this record out, and then I'm allowed to go home to my house in Vegas. But in the meantime, we're in Florida, and it's you know sweltery but beautiful. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Are there any tracks sending out more to you than any right now? I know these are your babies, and I know you've had these for a long time, but are there any that stick out for the both of you? Yeah, you know, like uh, I, she said, it's like it's a hard question. I have some favorites, but I don't, I don't, that's a question, right? With favorites. 
I, I like wrapped in chains, man. You know, I mean, I, I really do. And I like uh, Unfinished Masterpiece because it's just such a cool, eerie, half timey thing. My favorite track, I think, is uh, Breaker One Nine, just because of uh, it's an instrumental and there's a lot of different guitar styles that I incorporated into it. And it's... Yeah, it, it started out as a Johnny solo record, kind of, you know, like that was an original intent. And then it started turning into songs. You know, and then we're like, oh, this could be a, a, an actual album, you know. So, like I say, it was not contrived, not written with a plan. It was, it was cool. So it's pretty genuine, you know. Was there a track that you were working on that totally ended up sounding different than was intended to? Was there one that just changed a lot or no? No, I don't think so. Not really. Not no, for me anyway. Not really, because, you know, honestly, we were in... Uh, we were making the metal church record and we were in, we were in a, a pretty steady uh, mode and we were bouncing back and forth. Like we'll do sometimes, like when I'm working on uh, say a bigger record, like metal church, I'll also be banging out a couple other projects, you know, that are, that take less uh, effort, you know, uh, you know, I'll take a couple takes cause I usually, I learn songs and I usually get them in three, you know, um, as, as far as being a studio drummer, I've always been pretty quick. So I try and stay with that. So, regular songs i can look as long as i know i'm good i can track them in three takes so i'll usually at the end of a three or four hour metal church session i'll take a little break and come back and take a go at a two or three other songs uh that day it's kind of a little formula we have so that's what we do with the how and high i think this time we'll be doing metal church and a little bit of how and high and, and a couple other things john bouvoir wants to do a little uh recording and i have a, a couple other projects going on too and when people see and hear that I got my stuff up and plugged in, they come out of the woodwork and want more shit too. So I'll never get home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never getting home. <laughs> Ever. Fuck. So was this album produced in-house from you guys? Yes. Do you like having that, that, that feature to do it in-house besides going outside to have a producer or let's talk about that a little bit. If it's not an outside producer uh, that's that's amazing, then then we prefer to do it. And I would leave him alone to do whatever. He, this guy does, does is a great engineer producer. Together we do we do well. Um, you know, like Kurt Bandit who produces uh, the Metal Church. I think he does an amazing job. Um, one of my favorite producers is John Moyer from Disturbed. He's also a friend of mine, but I love his. You know, the depth of his production is is pretty impressive kind of in that in that disturbed uh vein and they're pretty pretty impressive so yeah I, I don't mind sending stuff out most of my my work i record the drums at my place and i send the files the, the wave files out to uh whoever i'm working with you know who did the cover art for this album guys uh, that would be joe monroe yeah our, our good friend joe monroe uh i told him I had the concept and then uh, he designed it and a couple, a couple of covers Joe, later, there it is. Joe's a dear old friend. He was in my band, the Holland Dogs, back in the late 90s. He's an amazing. Uh, and I'm in a band with him right now. Yeah, he's in a band with him right now. He's probably late for a gig. Uh, <laughs> no, Joe's amazing uh, player, singer, uh, bass player and singer. Just, you know, he can sing Pat Benatar, the guy. And we're all friends from Vermont days 30 years ago, I guess. But uh, he was in my band, the Holland Dogs, and we had a whole bunch of fun. And he, he just uh, jumped in to help us out. He's a great graphic artist, amazing bass player. He's also our electrician over here at the, at the studio. I need a 30 amp circuit run for that. I forget to tell you about that. <laughs> we'll get a hold of you. Don't worry. Thanks. Uh, you're so funny. Your thing keeps flying out of here. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> I got mine all the way in there. He's a jack of all trades. You just need anything, holler at him. <laughs> He's a good dude, man. Yeah, we have uh, got Florida where we are. We're in Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach area and uh, lots of great resources here. And I have a, a music warehouse right next to a bar. <laughs> and I'm uh, sorry. And it's just great. Uh, we, we, I rehearse all my projects here. And when I do fantasy camp, I'll fly in here and I'll learn like 14 songs in like two days and then go off to camp and play them with famous people. It's maddening. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what do you hope everybody takes away while listening to this new album once they start to listen to it man what do you hope they get from it i just hope they enjoy the music 
you know, I mean, it's just a, it's a labor of love. And it, it was just, uh, you know, we just, the most important thing is, you know, people listening to it and, and liking it. The most important thing to me, selfishly, is I want the world to know about him. <laughs> that's, yeah. what I, I, that's what I want, because I think, I think his playing is extremely unique. And I think uh, there's a lot of amazing guitar playing on this album. I mean, there, I think there's a lot of excellent musicianship. And I did fine, you know, I'm just like, I, I think I, I got some good stuff, but, you know, I, you know, I, I wanted the world to know about this guy, you know, really, that's, that's a lot of it for me. You know? With these tracks that's out, the pieces that you've added with this guys is, is just great. I absolutely love this. Um, it, like you said, it's all over the place. It, it, it's not just one set genre of music. It's a roller coaster of flavors, like a buffet sure. of flavors, you know, and, yep. uh, I like that in an album. I don't like the thousand miles. I, let, me, let me, let me, let me retract that. I love metal music. I love it all, but I like to have flavors. You know, I don't want to hear just one straight thing all the time. I do believe that you could find something on that record. You could play for somebody. You know what I mean? It's like, sure. it's like when I was in Wasp, it was like, um, some, you know, if you could find hold on to my heart or something, you know, you could, you could sell someone that wasn't really a metal fan because it was a pretty song, but, uh, yeah, this thing's got a lot of nice stuff on it and it's got some heavy, heavy, silly stuff too. You know, it's, uh, a, I think that my favorite thing about it is, you know, if you listen to it, you can absolutely tell it's us and it's kind of like, <laughs> it's like a Led Zeppelin record, or, <laughs> like a Led Zeppelin record. Everything's a little different, but you still know it's in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, when Zeppelin comes on the guitar, when it hits, you you know it's a Zeppelin. Just like Zach Wild when he plays guitar, you know when Zach's playing guitar because he plays like an 18-minute guitar solo every time. <laughs> oh, and John, you're a phenomenal player, man, so don't. You're an excellent, man, in my book. So there you go. Well, thank you. All right, Stanton, John, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy this album, merchandise, tour dates, everything about Highland, Highland Hyatt, everything with you guys. How can they do that, sir? You can go to highlandhyatt.com. And uh, pretty much everything's up on our website right there. Check our Facebook page. Yeah. And, you know, we're distributed by The Orchard. And it's like, you can find it if you just Google it, I mean, The Orchard, when it, when the record first came out, I was like, yeah, you know, I've heard these guys are great. Let me see. And I and when our record came out, I clicked on it, you know, at least today. And there was about 18 places where you could get it. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like Walmart, everything. It's like these guys just got it. The, we got the best distribution, you know. Um, you can get it on CD, vinyl, any any, any kind of format that yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. So yeah, I mean, it's like we're making it real easy for people to buy it, you know? Yeah. So, I, and I, you know, it's been we're getting spins and stuff, and people say they like it, and we're like just happy. We're, you know, we're 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 just getting ready for to do some shows when a few decent offers come in, you know. And there's the interest. People are like, you know, when are you coming here? When are you coming there? And I'm like, when? I'll tell you when. Yeah, I'm the guy to talk to. When someone offers us some decent money to come there, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because that's how life is these days, you know? Um, and, and, and they do. They do. It's good out there. You know, it's, it's good out there again. Uh, you know, you asked earlier, and uh, it really is good out there again. And, and, and people are, they were rocking over in Sweden, man. They, were, they weren't worried about anything. I mean, there was a few people with masks and stuff, and I'm not saying people shouldn't be careful, right. you know, depending on, I'm, I'm a cancer survivor. I'm a sickly mess. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not a, a big, a big mask guy. I did it when I was told to, and now I'm not told to, and I don't Now Some people do it for their own protection because they, they feel safe. I don't, I don't, you know, that's their business. I'm okay with that. Basically everybody's like, fuck the masks. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, really at, at the festivals, it was just business as usual. Yeah, it really was. Sorry about my hand. All right. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have all the links to everything that you guys have in this podcast when i post it awesome. everything will be listed in here for you guys for fans to, to awesome, get it. so so there's no excuse for nobody going to get in this folks it's right there jesus come on <laughs> before i let you guys go would you care to do a promo for my show johnny hi and step allen here hi and you're listening to bods mayhem hour we love it it's awesome Everybody stick around. We got some great, great stuff coming up. And you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. And please get out, check out our, our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link. And like I said earlier, subscribe to that YouTube link and hit the notification bell because we got a lot of great stuff coming up. 
Also, get out and pick up Helen Heights' new album, H2. You won't be disappointed. Like I told you folks, they got a great, great flavor of music on this. And uh, if you don't like it, come tell me, which I know I know you'll dig it. I know you'll dig it. Yeah, come tell him. We don't want to get it. <laughs> and I also want to throw this in here because I, I do it on every, every interview. I'm also affiliated with Metal Incorporated, also Form Obscure, which is an online magazine who uh, reviews albums. Plus, they do Obscure Art, who gives the artist uh, a, a praise and everything like that, which they have some great, great stuff in it. And Diary of the Mad Men, the ultimate Ozzy Osbourne podcast with Dan and Josh. They know everything about Ozzy, his shoe size, shirt size. I mean, everything that I, I don't want to know, but they know it all. So thank you all so much. And guys, thank you for doing this interview with me. I totally appreciate it. Our thank pleasure. you. We're honored, man. It was great. You're, you're a lot of fun. Absolutely. You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.